Wait, is that it? Okay. Welcome to FBB Forum. My name is David, and this podcast is dedicated to all the amazing muscle ladies. If you have, if you like this content, uh, please be sure to like and subscribe on YouTube and Instagram. I'm very pleased to welcome the beautiful IFBB Pro Women's Fiz or I'm sorry, <laughs> Women's Figure competitor Blanca Styles to the podcast. I'm sorry, Blanca, I can't talk today. Um, Blanca last competed in 2022 at the Hurricane Pro in St. Petersburg, Florida, where she placed in the top five. And uh, I think she has an amazing look and definitely has a very uh, bright future in the sport. Welcome, Blanca. It's really good to have you here. Hi, thank you for having me, David. You're, oh, Hi, you're welcome. Thank you. Now, my first few questions are about how you got started in bodybuilding. And I was wondering if you had an athletic or sports background before you started. Um, when I was in high school, I used to run track. So I did the four by four relay and also the open four, as well as the 800 events. Um, and bodybuilding was just something that I fell into. That's when like typically people start going to the gym. So there was a nearby bodybuilding gym. And you you know, like if you look like you compete, that conversation's always gonna come up. <laughs> so everyone asks, oh, are you are you competing anytime soon? Or are you thinking of doing it? And like, what are they talking about? Until so someone tried to like explain it to me. Then I went about and did my own research and I was like, you know, like maybe this is something I could do. And then it was one of those where I just fell into the sport and after that it was just like history. It's something I, I loved and pursued going um going forward so and it also helped that i did pretty pretty well <laughs> so it, it just kept fueling that um passion oh i bet track and field is is a good place to start too because you kind of build up your legs and a lot of the bodybuilders build up their upper body too our, our track and field uh, folks build up their upper body too i would say yeah, and I remember having this coach where, like, um, I had showed her, um, like, a, a picture of, uh, it was one of the bodybuilders I looked up to back then. She was in bikini, so I'm like, I want to look like her. I, I had a really thin build, <laughs> so uh -huh. they're like, like that, you don't have that body type. And I was like, when, when someone, like, tells you you can't, it just, like, motivates you to show them, like, exactly how you can. So I understand. I going forward and she saw me uh, I used to work at this local grocery store and I was like hey it was after I had went pro I'm like hey remember you said I couldn't do this she's like yeah and I was like ha huh. she's like whoa you know it was like it was like her way of motivating me to do better I don't know if she thought I could or couldn't but it definitely like my perspective was to show her like if I wanted to do something I could oh that's terrific that's great that's always a good motivator, I think. You're right. <laughs> You're like, ha, look what I can do. <laughs> That's terrific. Yeah. And you've really um, developed really well. You look great. Um, I was curious, um, did you have a, a fitness role model when you first started? Uh, I would look up to Sydney Gillen. Um, there was Nicole Wilkins at the time. That's when I had first started. Um, mm -hmm. Dana, she was like, you know, she had that funky personality pretty cool um and Ashini Grant at the time she was doing figure and I had been doing bikini but I would always like looked up to her like in her shoulders so it's like for me I always looked at her people's aspects I'm like all right so they have good shoulders I want to follow what they're doing and that was one of my critiques in one of my first bikini shows so oh, yeah. I would, like little tips here and there from just different athletes in the sports that's terrific. That's a that's a good lineup. I I hear about Nicole Wilkins and Dana Lynn Bailey a lot on this podcast because they've motivated so many people. Yeah, and no, they're great ambassadors for the sports too, and it's just they keep like the energy still alive, and you know, especially like as a a girl in the sport, I think they still have that feminine look. So it's like a lot of people think once you get into bodybuilding that you can't look feminine anymore, like. They forget about their health and all that stuff. So it's pretty cool to have like grown up while they were in the sport. I agree. Yeah. And I, I agree with you. I think it is important to keep the feminine look and and um and I think the judges like it too. So that helps too. <laughs> <laughs> now I was curious when you first got up on stage in a bikini for your first show, were you nervous? And 
that because I could see where it'd be kind of nerve wracking. Yeah, I, I think it was more like excitement, but more than anything, I think I was just like excited to do it already since like the deadline had always been there. You knew when you were going to compete. So it's like I just wanted to do it like like whatever the outcome was, I was like, I, I put in the work. It's like the anticipation was just like killing me. So finally getting up, there, like it felt awesome. Like it was like more excitement and more than nerves. But I think that I was more, I guess, nervous for my pro debut more than anything. That um, when I did um, the figure pro debut and um, the Pitts um, Pittsburgh pro. And for oh. whatever, like I had gone on stage so many times, but like, I don't know, maybe it was because I was with like the big girls or like, you know, veterans in the sport. Yeah. But, it was, or, but my first bikini show, I think I was just like, oh, okay, this is all new to me, like open minded. Was um what was your or what year was your um your pro debut? I was 2018. 2018. Oh, in which division? Say that again. In figure. Oh, and figure. Oh, very cool. Wow. Um, and I was curious, what's been your highest placing so far in the pros? Um, it was uh, actually the Hurricane fourth place. Oh yeah. Oh, very cool. Oh, I was so sorry. San Antonio is where I got fourth place, and then the Hurricane I got fifth. Okay, that's great. That oh, so last year was your best year so far. Yeah, very cool. That's awesome. I bet you're gonna win a show soon because you'll probably get to the Olympia soon. I bet you. <laughs> so that's the goal it'd be nice too <laughs> <laughs> that'd be awesome yeah you would have such a good look too um now I, I had seen that you had competed both in figure and wellness and i was curious if you have a preference over one over the other because i think you're better suited to figure personally i i feel better like in my skin doing figure um it's just overall the whole process of getting there like um, I had done wellness um, after my my figure debut. Um, I took some time off to focus on school and just like work. And um, so when the wellness division came out, I was like, oh, I might as well like give it a try since I like was still in, like growing throughout the years. Um, but I just felt like awkward <laughs> and like the poses. I guess I was so used to doing figure that when I went into wellness, I was like, this doesn't feel like me. And then I, I really had to limit myself in the gym because I, I can't grow my upper body too much for wellness as they want more of a dominant, like lower half. Mm -hmm. And for me, the gym is like my happy moment, like my happy place. So if I had to limit it, it's like I didn't want that going forward. And then I would just feel like I was half-assing everything, which is sure. not fun. So I, I love the wellness division. Like they're insane. <laughs> like they look amazing, but I felt I feel better in figure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I kind of like figure better because you're more symmetrical, you know, top to bottom, you know, whereas, yeah, with wellness, you're really focusing on your legs and glutes and everything. And yeah, I, I think now I, I was just curious if you'd consider competing in women's physique, because I think you could really place well in that division and you could ditch the heels and do your posing routine too but I didn't know if you'd consider that I've considered it I've been asked a lot if I would um consider switching as well and um I think I would have to take a like a longer off season or just um you know maybe I could give it a try in 2024 and see where I fall into with the with the bigger girls but for right now figures like where I'm at oh that's terrific yeah I hope you'll try it though oh say that again I'm sorry I do like that they don't have to wear heels because they can like pose better and like show off their physique a lot better. <clears throat> oh, I know. It's got to be a lot more comfortable to ditch the heels, I imagine. <laughs> yeah, so I would consider it, but I think that's, right now the same figure. That's great. I, I, yeah, I do like the idea of testing the water, so just try a show and see how you do. <laughs> um. Now you mentioned about getting your pro card in 2018, so that must have been really exciting for you to to compete and and um and uh and then do your pro debut. But what was that experience like to to get the pro card? Uh, I had gotten the pro card in um in 2016. Sorry, and I did the pro debut in 2018. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's right. Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> uh, um. But it was it was a good experience. I remember nationals. Um, it was here in Miami. I think this year, yeah, this weekend it was up in Texas. So yes. it was cool. 
yeah. and local, being able to drive over. You don't have to worry about like if you forget something, like everything's right there in your backyard. I was able yeah. to have like to go, you know, without too many expenses either. <laughs> nice. Um, it's like all your friends and then being able to like go out right after. It, it felt good. And it's like I had set that goal to get my pro card by 21. I remember I found it, you know, when you're um, spring cleaning. Like you find old notes. So I guess I made like a goal for like that year to get it by 21. And then uh-huh. after that, I made it come true. So that's it was terrific. Good- that's very cool. That's exciting. Yeah, I bet it was really exciting. I, I think I've, I might have been to that show in 2016. I, I went to a few nationals when they were in Miami. And then I went to a few when they were in Orlando and it was really close by. Um, I, I hope it comes back to Florida just for convenience sake because it is. It's definitely one of the best shows of the year, no doubt. I hope so, too. <laughs> Although, like, Texas was here in Orlando, but I'm excited for it to be back in Vegas. Like, a nice little getaway. <laughs> oh, I know. Yeah, that's true. I, I kind of like how they're alternating it between Vegas and Orlando, and I hope I hope they'll continue the, the alternating like that, because that is nice. Now, um, it, if you don't mind me asking, uh, where do you hope to compete next, or do you know yet? Um, I have so I have two shows in mind. It would obviously be awesome to go back and do the Pittsburgh Pro, and um, also the New York Pro. Um, I don't know if the calendar has come out yet, but if it's the same as last year's, there's one in Georgia in March. So that one is the is the goal. Oh, that's terrific. Great. So maybe but... three shows. <laughs> oh, it um so that how how much uh, time would you do for prep to get ready for the first show? I like to like do a slower prep just because it's like it's just easier and then it's more it's like when it's part of your lifestyle, it's just just you feel like you cruise into the show rather than like a crash diet, but it would be um give or take four to five months. So like a 20 week prep, more or less. You okay, know, true. Foundation. Sure, I understand. No, that's cool. Very cool. And um and yeah, I look forward to seeing you on stage again too. Um I was curious what would you say has been your favorite bodybuilding show so far and, and why? I would say I love the the shows up in Texas for some reason. I I don't know if maybe it's the barbecue food after. <laughs> oh. but the Tampa Pro is also one of my favorite shows. I had one um when I was an amateur. I won the overall there, and then you get all the really cool bodybuilders come up, and like it's a like a big inspiration to see all these like big names there. So, yeah. Pro is one of my favorites. That's very very cool. Yeah, Tampa Pro is is a great show, and um, I think Tim Gardner does a really good job. I, he does the Hurricane Pro also. I think. Yeah, he's he did. Yeah, that did you like Hurricane Pro too? Yeah, I did. Yeah, he always has very organized shows, so I think that's why I like I like going more towards his. Oh, I understand. Yeah, he does. He does a great job, definitely. Thank you. Um, Beautiful. So <laughs> that was my first time checking out that area as well. Oh, St. Petersburg is beautiful. Yeah. That area's improved a lot too. It's so nice. Just Tampa area in general is nice. And Tampa is a really supportive community, I think, for, for bodybuilding. Yeah. Um, now I was curious, and do you have a, a prep coach? I do. I was um I'm working with uh Christopher Luke. So he's um another owner here at Pets of Pure Miami. So he's um uh, my second eye and he's pretty good, you know. That's great. How long have you been working with him? Um it was um for last year. So we're doing more like getting to know my body, seeing like what foods worked and not. And yeah, so far it's been good. And are you working with a posing coach too? Sydney Gillen. She's awesome. Say the name again. Sydney Gillen, um, uh, Miss Olympia. And oh, oh, very cool. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. I wish she was in person. That'd be like even like cooler to have her there, you know, critique you in person. But we worked very well together in person. And then, um, you know, 
having like figure friends too. We help each other out with our posing. So Maria Pelando has also helped me out as well um, with posing. So yeah, I That's just great. like the being as well. Sure. That's great. That's terrific. Yeah. That's some good coaches for sure. And I'll make sure to include their Instagram uh, both in the comment section so people can check them out later. Thank you. Now I was curious, what would you say is kind of the most challenging aspect of prep for you? Mm, I would say just like on the days where you don't want to do or eat certain things or you want to eat other things, like just having that then, but other than that, it would just be having to still like being a trainer and coaching other people like in person, like they're there for your energy to like keep them awake or like if they had a bad day at work, like you, no matter how like, like low your energy might be and because of like a caloric de deficit, like still having to be there for them, you know, mm. and like feeling like I can't give them all my energy. But mm -hmm. even, to them, they might not see it. But in my head, it's like, I just want to be more present. Sure. So, I, making sure you got enough sleep definitely helps. Yeah, that's true. That's really important. And you're you're in Miami, right? So I was thinking that that'd be tough because you can't go out to the club, you know, can't do much, you know, fun stuff per se, because you're you got to worry about, you know, your competition coming up and stuff. <laughs> Well, I, I don't think I've had like like issues with um having to go out or anything. Um it's more like for dinners. So like with, with like your coworkers or stuff. It's like more of the food. Cause the alcohol is not too hard to like say no to. Like mm. a diet or an iced coffee. <laughs> but it's definitely the food. I have a major sweet tooth. So <laughs> Oh, I see. And I'm, yeah, it's okay. It's not worth it right now. I understand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's that'd be tough with the sweet tooth, I bet. But as far as like going out to clubs, I don't I don't like too like crowded like places. So I like more lounges or little low key spots, like very chill. Nothing to and Miami can get really crazy. So <laughs> I like to kind of stay away from it. Oh, I understand. Yeah. Miami Beach gets so crazy sometimes and then they have like crazy shootings over there and just kind of, yeah, it's kind of wild over there. <laughs> you live in Miami, you know, not to go out to those populated areas during like spring break and stuff. Cause it's like when all the tourists come to be crazy. Like, yeah, I that's like true. Somewhere else. I understand. Yeah. And the traffic's terrible too, especially during spring break and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right now this week so it's like all those areas are filled with people it's like they do like a really cool like um like they have art everywhere and then people will come out like with their instruments and just like around the Wynwood area or in South Beach mm -hmm. so that's, that's something different than super crazy Miami I've Although heard that art that's Art Basel right I've, I've heard that's really cool I've never been to it before I saw the the rapper 2 chains like crashed his vehicle there and he they showed up the video that he took of him getting wheeled into the ambulance there <laughs> i haven't seen it yet but i don't doubt it yeah <laughs> miami is so interesting because you got you know so many celebrities there but it, it's different from tampa because i think we're quite a bit quieter in tampa but uh, miami just so dynamic it is always really fun to go there and visit the keys is also fun the keys I work yeah, the Keys, like Key Largo or yeah. the Point. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I went there for the first time being born and raised in Florida. I've never been, but that was a good experience as well. I would definitely oh. go back. Oh, the Keys are beautiful. I love it down there. And it's relatively quiet and, and kind of chill down there too, which is nice. Yeah. Now, I was curious how long have you worked as a trainer and a coach? And I was wondering if you might have any clients that you'd like to highlight here on the on the podcast. I've been working as a trainer since uh, 2015, so about nine years. And then as a coach, just prepping people, I would only get like select few people. Um, I have been working night shift for a while, so it's like I didn't mm -hmm. really have to focus on people, but as a trainer over nine years now. 
Wow, that's terrific. Very cool. Um, and how old are you, if you don't mind me asking? 28. 28. Oh, so you started pretty young as a coach and trainer, huh? Uh, I got really into the whole nutrition part of it because it's, um, as far as I was learning or, you know, um, researching, I would see that nutrition played a huge role in, like, the goals that you would want for yourself aesthetically as well as, like, health-wise and being stronger in the gym, too. So I got really into it and I just found it like very fascinating where that's where you saw like the most changes was through like the diet because you can't like outwork a bad diet. You can get stronger maybe up until a point, but then you have to tweak some things and then obviously you get getting leaner. I thought it was pretty cool. Like just yeah. seeing the. That's terrific. That's really cool. Um, do you work with uh, both bodybuilding and lifestyle clients? Yes. I also work at Ocean Reef. It's down in uh, North Key Largo too. And that's more of like a older population. So it's um, corrective exercises, also getting them stronger too. And just, it's, it's a good place to work at as well. That's great. Very cool. Yeah. And um, I'll say that again. A, a variety of people. So A it's, variety yeah. of people. Oh, sure. I understand. That's Ocean Reef is really nice, too. Yeah. Now, um, I know from Instagram, you it's mentioned so you co-own um, Flex Appeal Miami. And I was curious, um, who are your other partners and how long have you co-owned this gym? So I started, um, I was co-owner as of this year in February. And the other partners are uh, Jesus and his wife. So they have the majority of their percentage. Then Julio. Christopher Luke and uh, Wilmer. So they actually, um, we owned part of um, BAM Tampa. So they there was a location up there too. And uh, yeah, it's been pretty good. Yeah, so BAM Tampa is still Anastasia Ryder, I think? I correct, yes. And she just won her pro card too at Nationals. That was really cool. <laughs> She's been knocking at the door for a while. So I was really pleased that she finally got the pro card. <laughs> Is it, um, how, how do you like owning the gym? It, that'd be, I can see where it'd be rewarding, but challenging, but do you have a pretty good clientele there? I love it. So it's, uh, I, it, that's like the only gym that I had, um, primarily had gone to, um, growing up as well. So it was like, it's nice to be more involved than just like a gym that I go to. So. Sure. That's terrific. Yeah. That's really cool. Um, yeah, you're you've accomplished a lot at such a young age. It's really impressive, I think. Thank you. It feels like I'm running against the clock, but I, I like having that mentality. So like you never settle. So yeah. even though or think that I've accomplished a lot, I feel like there's so much room for more. So it's like sure. I don't <laughs> And you got it well, like we talked about, you got to get to the Olympia too. So I think you're gonna get there though. Uh-huh. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be exciting, huh? Um, now we talked a little bit about your mom um at, earlier, and I was curious if your your parents and other families support your bodybuilding career. Yeah, they're very supportive of it. Actually, like, I don't think that they're ever negative about it. And I know they make like jokes, like, "Oh, I'm bigger than you," or like, you know, teasing. But they're very supportive. And I know sometimes they want me to enjoy their home cooked food, but they've learned to accept it. In the beginning, it was they're like, you can have an apple, you can have this. And you're like, no, I can't. It's not part of my macros or part of my meal plan. And we're like, but why? So I know it like takes a little getting used to, especially because it's like, you're not eating unhealthy and it's not that what they're mentioning is unhealthy, but like it's, um, I think for them, like they're kind of like, why can't you eat that? You know, <laughs> <laughs> I think everyone around me has been very supportive as Are well. From like, like places I've worked or other friends too. That's terrific. Are you from a Cuban family? Uh, Nicaraguan. Nicaraguan. Oh, very cool. That's cool. I was just curious from a cultural standpoint, is there, there, is there much bodybuilding going on in Nicaragua or is it kind of, um, I was thinking about, you know, Hispanic culture and kind of macho. I don't know like how 
if you in encounter some kind of pushback because of that from cultural standpoint? I, I don't think that I've seen any kickbacks, no. I know Brazil is big in bodybuilding. <laughs> They're awesome. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, Brazil is big. I was thinking yeah. about, um, so with the, the top three at women's physique, um, you know, Uzama and um, Natalia were both from Brazil. So that's, yeah, that's making a big statement right there. <laughs> I think Natalia and I are almost like the same age. She won her pro debut in the Tampa Pro when I won the, the amateur overall. So that was pretty oh, cool. Did? Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> Have you got to meet her? She really seems really sweet. Yeah, yeah, she's sweet. Yeah, she's just really impressive. <laughs> I'll say that again, I'm sorry. And she's pretty impressive. Like her physique is like insane. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I remember. And she started off with figure, I remember, and then moved up to women's physique. So yeah, her physique is amazing. <laughs> Brooke Walker is also pretty nice too. I met her in person at, um, at the Olympia this year. Oh, you did? Oh yeah. She's true. Yeah. I got to meet her too. And actually both Natalia and her, they're both really sweet. They're great. So that was awesome. <laughs> That's very cool be online in person and then them actually be like genuine and, and nice on the inside as well. I know. Yeah. That's really nice, isn't it? Yeah. And they're, um, it is neat to get to meet them in person too. Cause you just kind of, you see them on, on competing or on Instagram, but to get to meet them in person is great. I would think too, it would be, I don't know how they're so nice when they're so depleted getting ready for <laughs> to be on stage too. I think that would be, I don't think I could do it. I'd be kind of grumpy, I think. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's like, I think just being tired maybe, but it's always how it's like, like for me, I think if I get angry or like a little cranky, I, I just get quiet. Mm -hmm. So it's <laughs> two persons that you kind of like can get a little snippy, but you, you always want to like portray yourself as like, you know, I think if you love what you're doing, and you have the energy to like give off or radiate, like to keep it going. Mm -hmm. I think that's good. And you're like, whoa, <laughs> you might need a piece of bread. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> I know what you mean. Yeah. I <laughs> No, I think that's good though. Yeah, to be, yeah, just kind of quiet versus like being mean. Cause yeah, people, you know, being mean is not good. So <laughs> I think I just like, I would get quiet. Like, Oh, you preserve your energy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like preserving it more than wasting it on being like snappy or something on someone. Yeah, exactly. Keeping that and keeping positive, keeping positive energy is important, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Like being depleted, and like all these emotions are running through your head. Like it could get hard. So I can see how some people like, you know, get under moods. Yeah, that's true. I can definitely see that. I, I would be so grumpy. I think if I competed, I would be, yeah, not, I couldn't have be around people. I don't think. <laughs> um, I was curious um, in, in terms of social media, um, do you, do you ever find yourself like the target of like fit shaming? Cause I was kind of surprised that bodybuilders have to kind of deal with this, but you know, of course there's haters and trolls out there, but I was wondering if you have, have, have encountered that kind of fit shaming, um, problem with with um with people on on social media i know it's funny you say that because um it does happen a lot and especially like not just women but like men too like the it's like the fitter you are the more upset people are and then it's, you go to their page and they're not even like close to being in shape and you're like we don't fat shame you but you could like fit shame like you know fit people um i notice it a lot with it's more so the guys on like my page, like mm. they'll aim and then I'll get some from like females too, but I just like ignore it. In the beginning, it kind of sucks because you're like, what am I doing so wrong? And, so, and, and then it's like, you just learn to, that that's how some people are. They're just like not happy with themselves. So it's, that's why it's like important to always be happy with like every part of the process and to make sure you're doing it like for you. Because or like, 
there's some people that just like want to compete so they can like be in this new group of friends or or they see validation from like the judges or from anyone they're surrounded by but it's like I learned like a long time ago like because I would sometimes feel like as weird as it sounds like insecure to like even show off my physique in the gym like I would mm. never want it's, which is funny because you're on stage like in a bikini but it's like I felt like 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 I was being judged because I was like so in shape mm, type of thing interesting yeah I think that those folks are probably just jealous probably <laughs> I just like focus on me and it's like now I wear whatever I want to wear and just people are always going to talk so it's like if it makes you happy just like stick with it yeah but I think that's that's good advice no, yeah, definitely. And and you got to do for you and um and you look terrific too. So you have nothing to be ashamed of for sure. <laughs> Sometimes I shy away like you know in off season the shoulder cap starts fading a little bit. So you're like, "All right, t-shirt time." <laughs> oh. like... But no, I, I like enjoy every part of the process. There's some I enjoy more, but <laughs> you got to enjoy it all. That's terrific. Yeah, I agree with you on that. And that's good advice too for for people who are kind of up and coming too, I think. Um, I only have about two and a half minutes left. So I did have just a quick question, last question for you. Um, I was curious if you were kind of in a leadership position with IFBB or NPC, is there anything you would like to do to make the sport better? I like how the IFBB is going now. I mean, like they've worked hard to like, you know, make sure that the criteria is like up to date um tyler is doing pretty well in like these videos now and using mm -hmm. like media as like the you know the platform that he used but he's i like how he's been coming out with like more videos and like being more detailed because it can get pretty confusing um for some especially with like the um, competitiveness in the divisions mm -hmm. so i i like how the sport's going like i love the figure division too i, I like how now you have to win a show in order to to compete in the Olympia, I just feel like it heightens that competition more, especially like if it's the best of the best, it's like, it might be harder to get in, but nothing worth having comes easy, right? So cliche, but no, mm -hmm. but I like how the IBB is doing. I agree. I, I do like those Tyler videos too. I think that's kind of, um, a, kind of a nice new thing because uh, kind of laying out that criteria and, and given the recaps, I think is, has been kind of a nice new thing that they're doing for sure. I think it helps a lot also like in the men divisions. So, cause they're more specific. Whereas like in figure, it's really just like an open class, like all heights, but I know that they have like height, weight and um, like specifics. So I think like the videos are like a great asset. Yeah, so I... People coming into the sport. Like they can like all different athletes that are in right now and what, what not to do, what to do. So I think sure. it's pretty. I agree with you on that. Well, Zoom is going to end this, our call here in a second, but I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. And I'll get this posted soon. So, thank, thank you. you Blanca. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right. Take care.